Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you to uh, another uh, fabulous video series with our dear uh, friend, brother, and guest, and expert also, uh, Dr. Jay Smith. I think we have proved without a shadow of a doubt that what we are dealing with today, tangible evidence, do not really match up with the standard Islamic narrative concerning Mecca, when it was founded, why it was founded, and so on and so forth. Well, today, there are, as you know, uh, it's always the case with uh, Dr. J and his team, whenever they find something new, they immediately release it, and we always have the privilege of inviting Dr. J here to even share it with our own viewers. So today is no difference. We are going to continue with our discussion concerning Mecca and the fact that there are more Meccan problems. So the search continues. With that in mind, I want to welcome our dear brother, Dr. J. Dr. J, welcome back. It's good to be back in the studio again. Listen, Al Fadi, we've gone through the book, The Man in the Place. Those are the three things we've been looking for in what we call the historical critique. You and I have already gone through the man himself, Muhammad. We've pretty well debunked him from the 7th century, not trusting the 8th and 9th century narratives or Islamic traditions, what we call the standard Islamic narrative, S-I-N. Uh, obviously, it's a play on words, but it's a play, it's for, for intentionally done that because we're not the ones that came up with that nomenclature on Dr. Al-Fadi and that in that that interview that he did uh, in 2020, June 8th, 2020, where he actually introduced the standard Islamic narrative into his interview, that we've jumped on that and we're running with it. And in the standard Islamic narrative, really there are three things, and these are the three things that we have been trying to unpack. The book would be the Quran, the man would be Muhammad, and the place would be Mecca. You and I have already done a, a, a series on the book. We've already done a series on the man. We're going to be coming back and doing the book again. But we want to talk about and continue this series on Mecca the place. Mecca the place. Mecca the place. Because how? Why? Because Muslims have made claims about it. And what I like to do is go to some of the claims. So let's go I put up the slide here and look at all the prophets that were buried there. This is something I hadn't realized until it was brought to my attention by some of those on our list. And they said, Jay, do you look at, have you looked at all the references to the prophets? So I had my team start going back and looking and seeing where all these references are. Let's just go through some of them to show you this is problematic in and of itself. Adam and Eve, as we already said, but this is, this is not something new. Adam and Eve were born. But here's what Reuben and Wheeler notes. Uh, according to the standard Islamic nations, um, traditions, that both Adam was, not only was Adam that he died there, and as you know, once you die, you get buried within 24 hours. So you don't that's right. move them to another city. You get buried where you die. And that's your tradition because you have to do it before sundown. So he was buried at Mount Abu Qubais near Mecca, where Eve had also been buried. That's what the traditions tell us. What about this name Abu Qubais? Well, the Kasai says specifically, the angel laid him in a grave and his head was at the site of the Kaaba and his feet stretched out. So he's buried right there next to the Kaaba according to what traditions tell us. What's fascinating is we know where Abu Qubais is. Abu Qubais, if you take a look at this map here, uh, and I put it on the screen there, and I'm going to put a green arrow. Take a look where that is. Abu Qubais is a verb way up over by Latakia. Up in Latakia is in Syria. Is in Syria, yeah. This is way up in the Mediterranean. That's the original Abu Qubais. Yeah. They took that word. And remember, whenever you leave and you go to a new place, you take what you are familiar with and you take it with you. New York, the city of New York. Why is it called New York? Because it's referring to the old York. Mm -hmm. Where I live in Pennsylvania, there is a place called York. Right. That is the name of people who have come from the old York, which is in England or Britain. And when they moved to America, they redid that, lang that, that word. You will find a place called Berlin, East Berlin. You'll have all these names mm -hmm. all over America. And usually you take the name of the place you come from and you, then you recreate it in where right. you now have moved to, which is exactly what you're seeing here. The o old Abu Qubais is in northern Syria, just southeast of Latakia, on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, almost 12 hundred miles further north from Mecca. This is a this is a perfect example of this borrowing. So mm -hmm. it looks like the original one was way up north. Have we said this before? We did mention things like this in the past, but now we're unpacking it even deeper. So just to bring that up as a side issue, let's get back then to the prophets. Did you know that Seth was also buried there? According to Uri Rubin, who talks, he talks about Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, was also buried where Adam and Eve were buried. We already know that Adam and Eve were buried there. More than that, Ishmael, according to Al-Masudi, 
Reuben talks about this and says that Ishmael was one who was buried in Mecca opposite the place of the black stone. Where is the black stone? Mecca. You right guessed it. In the Kaaba. It's right, it's right there on the eastern corner of the Kaaba. The sacredness attached in the Muslim tradition to the Hijjah is focused on the idea that this area was the burial place of the noble dead, especially Ishmael, who is connected in Muslim legend with the history of the Kaaba. The tomb of this patriarch is found there. And he mentions this in, in his grave. But he goes on, uh, according to Muhammad, Ibn Abd Allah al I let you say this because uh, Whelan M. Thaxon refers to him and he says that Noah and Adam were both buried in Mecca. So you can see the traditions are very clear uh, that Adam's kiln was to the right of the Kaaba. God told the angels to carry it to Noah's house, which it was then where the mosque of the Kufa now stands. So now this is according to Al-Kisai. I mean, uh, every Muslim knows or at least heard the name Al-Kisai, just like you say, Al-Bukhari, Muslim. Al-Kisai is one of those big names. So this is the standard Islamic narrative again. Right, yes. And we're going on what the, and I, everything I'm going to be introducing right now is from the standard Islamic narrative, just right. so you know that and so everybody else who is watching knows that. Standard Islamic narrative are the Islamic tradition, and that is, refers to the Sirah of Ibn Hisham and al wikidi that refers also to the Hadith of Sahih Bukhari, Ibn Daud, Tirmidhi, and the others that also refers to the Tafsir and the Tariq of Al-Tabri, Zamakshari, Suyuti, Baidawi. All of these are what we know as the standard Islamic narrative. These are the traditions, the Islamic traditions that begin in the 9th century, 833 with Ibn Hisham, continue with Al-Buhari in 870 and 875, moving up onto Al-Tabri, 923 and later. So these are all 9th and 10th century. Let me repeat that. These are all 9th and 10th century traditions which are referring back to Adam and Eve or referring back to Noah and referring back to, uh, in, uh, in this case, Seth. In fact, let's continue on because there's more that come up. Let's go to the next one, Hud. Now, who is Hud? Well, he is the great, great grandson of Noah. Uh, he's found in Surah 11. He also was buried there in Mecca, again, again according to Al-Qasai, that is part of the standard Islamic narrative. What about Saleh? Well, Saleh uh, is quoting Al-Tabari, says that Sully, the grandfather of Hagar, who is the cons uh, the, uh, the slave woman they, that bore Ishmael, was from Medina, but she died in Mecca. So Sully is there in, in uh, Mecca as well, according to Umar as al And we have Ashtar. an entire city engraved uh, basically in uh, uh, rocks called Madain Saleh, the cities of Saleh. The city of Saleh. So he's right there. Yeah. Queen of Sheba, I didn't know this. This is a new one. Gustav Well mo, mo, looks and he says, according to traditions, the, the grave of Bacchus, the Queen of Sheba, is also found there in Mecca. This is a new one to me. What is she doing way up there when she should be way down in what is today Yemen? Because that's where she is from. Yeah. Oh, nonetheless, she's, she's also buried in Mecca. Yeah. According to Ibn Kathir and the stories of the prophet, Daniel not only lived there, was but also died there. Daniel, the, the prophet Daniel, the old prophet Daniel. That we have a, the book of you know you've got the, the uh, this great story of Daniel in the lion's den, and yet here he's yeah. not in Israel. He's way down there in Mecca. I, I think we're beginning to see uh, a uh, basically uh, a motif here, if you wish. There is an attempt to embellish the standard Islamic narrative by infusing all of these big names to give credibility to the standard Islamic narrative, of, you know, basically to, to the story of Islam, to Muhammad, to Islam as a religion, to the Quran. I mean, you have big names here who are only biblical names. In fact, if you ask anyone to talk about Seth, find me a story of Seth, for instance, in the, in the Quran. You won't find it. You have to go there. to the Bible to find the story about Seth. For historically, we're going to get to that. Exactly, exactly. But if you want to find out where he is in Islamic text, you've got to go to the standard Islamic And these narrative. are writings that were written later, after the time of Muhammad, after the rise of Islam, which is easy. You and I can write story right now and add more names if we want to. Why not? It gets even yeah. better than that. Take a look at the next slide. Yeah. 70 to 300 prophets, according to the standard Islamic narrative, between 70 to 300 different prophets. Ali Nuruman, who has written about this extensively, he mentions that there were buried 70 prophets, including Had and Saleh and Ishmael. The graves of Nuh and Hud and Shu'aib and Saleh and Ishmael were located between the Zamzam and the Makam. Well, the Zamzam and the Makam were within, as we now know, are within 30 meters of the Kaaba. So you can see they're all scrunched up together. The number of prophets that were buried there, some say uh, between 77 to 99. Others say that they're around the Kaaba, around the Kaaba. So we're talking about that little area around the Kaaba. There were 300 prophets that were buried there, 
according to Uri Rubin, when he's looking at the, the, the standard Islamic. Wheeler also notes the same thing. Uh, Asiyuti reports that Shoai, along with Hud, Saleh, Mishmael, and Noah are buried in the sanctuary. So you see prophet after prophet after prophet. But not only are they buried there, look at the, what we found next. Look at the next slide. They're still alive and praying there. Al-Askar notes, it is narrated in the Sahih, uh, authentic hadith, that the prophet said the prophets are alive in their grave and they're praying. So, I mean, when they were buried, they were, pray- they were buried in the position of prayer. Yeah. So, <laughs> one of the ways in which Allah honors his prophets and messengers is that the earth does not consume their bodies. No matter how long a time passes, their bodies remain preserved from decay, according to the hadith. The Sahih text indicates that the bodies of the Prophet will not decay or disappear as happens to the bodies of others, according to Umar al-Askar. Now, stop and think that through. If that is the case, stop and think it. You've looked at the pictures. We've shown the pictures many times of all the uh, of all the buildings that are being built right now. Mm-hmm. You have that clock tower, the fourth highest building in the world uh, while we're speaking. At that building, and if you're going to build large clock towers that are that high, you need to dig deep foundations. And when you dig deep foundations, what are you doing? Well, you're uncovering lots of land. And this is all around the Kaaba, where these 300 prophets are buried. When you dig foundations, don't you think they should be coming across these bodies? Absolutely. In fact, I would challenge anyone right now with the technology that we have, just use any devices that can at least show you images of what's underneath these grounds, like the uh, the grave wait, of Muhammad. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, these are all live. Remember what we just read? Saying, just show us what's there. These prophets are still kneeing. They're still, they're still in a kneeing position. They're still praying. They're supposed to be alive as they're praying. Where are these prophets? Where are these bodies? Where are these bones? Yeah. It's, you know, the more that you unpack the traditions, the more you look at the standard Islamic narrative, when, when uh, Yasser Qadi says the standard Islamic narrative has holes in it, here's another huge hole. I'd like to know where these prophets are between 70 to 300. Let's look at the next slide. Let's conclude this and let's just go through each one of the list. Adam and Eve, Seth, Ishmael, Noah, Hud, Saleh, Queen of Sheba, Daniel, 70 to 300 that are prophets all lived or died there in Mecca. This would mean that almost all of the Bible would have to be rewritten. We'd have to write everything about the Bible and all of the stories be redirected 600 to 1,000 miles further south. Yet there is so much evidence for the biblical narrative historically, yet almost nothing for Islam. So where do Muslims go to get their authority for all of these stories? Can you see this is a real problem here? Absolutely. Absolutely. And and this is why we are doing this continuation of that series, because the more evidence uh, are available out there, uh, Dr. J and his team, and I'm uh, thankful to also uh, play a role in this and bringing it here in our channel, we want you, our viewers, to be aware of it immediately for one purpose, really. I mean, if, if you're a Muslim watching this, we're just asking you to examine the evidence. Don't, don't get emotional. Emotions do not do anything. All we're saying is get tangible, get factual. Here are evidence. As a Muslim, by the way, you can go to Mecca, right? Non-Muslims cannot go to Mecca. You go to Mecca and you find these graves for us. In fact, be the first to do a YouTube channel and show us these images. In fact, be the first to take even devices to show us that there are actual living human beings who are praying in their graves. I mean, that will be a ground-shattering discovery, actually, for everyone. If you want to prove Islam is right, this is your opportunity to do it. So let's get real. There is none of this, nothing that exists anywhere, anywhere, anywhere in the earth. And that's what I mean by anywhere. So let us really focus on reality. You want to know about these prophets? Most of them, not all of them, at least Islam invented some names. You can go to the Bible. You read the history of these prophets. All of these prophets and descendancies and their genealogy and all of that throughout the Bible is very crystal clear. None of this nonsense in the Bible, that you go to the grave of Abraham and he's still praying, that you go to the grave of Ishmael or Isaac or anybody else that is still praying. I mean, what benefit does it do to us anyway, even if they're still praying? I tell you one, one, one thing, the God that we worship is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of the living. They are alive in heaven, that's for sure, not in the body, but in the spirit, as every one of us who is in Christ will be in heaven, absent from the body, presence with the Lord immediately. 
So we invite you to accept the Lord and get along with that and forget about these mythical stories that do not save anyone. All it causes is just people have bragging rights about things that are non-cynical, things that cannot be collaborated, things that cannot be proved, yet the facts and the truth are always fine in the true book of God. That's the Bible. And that's what we invite you as our viewers, especially if you're a Muslim, to consider examining these facts in light of what the Word of God is saying. And the more we share things with you, I assure you, you are going to be more and more uh, basically alert to the fact that what the standard Islamic narrative shares has nothing whatsoever to do with reality. And that's what we hope for, is that you come back home to the Lord, to the facts, to the truth. Amen? This is Al-Fadi, over and out. God bless.